Hello everyone, I want to share a bohemian um, tassel project with you today. A couple of days ago I posted um, an, another bohemian inspired um, video based on a kit that I received from my lovely friend Maggie Sanderson who runs a craft group for carers in Hereford. She sent me one of the kits that she's been sending out um, to their members and asked me if I would share some ideas for using the contents. Um, so these are the projects that I put together a couple of days ago. I will leave a link to this in the description box below. Now I must explain this kit is not available to anybody other than the members of Rejuvenate which is um, just a locally based um, craft group as I say for carers um, but the reason I decided to um, put the camera on um, rather than just share it with Maggie's group is I know that many of you just absolutely love bohemian style and I've probably got you know um, materials that are very very similar to what was included. So this is what I got um, with the tassel kit which I do believe was put together by Maggie's co-worker Lisa absolutely beautiful jewel coloured um, sari silks love these so you know teals reds um, a cerise pink orange and this lovely yellow so we've got ribbons here now Lisa did include um, instructions as to how you can make the tassel I'm going to do mine slightly um, differently just because I've made tassels um, myself in the past um, Lisa also said that, you know, if you want to add lots of other, um, additional types of ribbons, then you can do. I've pulled out a few here. I'm not going to use these um, just because I want to keep the tones um, fairly similar and I want to try and use this um, if I can. And I don't want it to get um, overly busy or overly thick. So I've just laid these out like this, trying to mix the colours up if I can, but trying to get the, um, the lengths as even as I possibly can. I am not worried in the slightest about out, um, all of the strands that um, that you can see coming off um, especially on these um, teal pieces that's absolutely fine that doesn't matter that just adds um, texture and interest so I've laid those out there like that um, we've also got this yarn which I think um, in the instructions was intended for you to um, tie your um, tassel together I'm going to use this um, just as part um, of my tassel itself because I'm going to um, put mine together as I say slightly differently so I am just going to cut those bits off, turn that over and put um, another length. These are not even. I can trim it down when it's all finished, um, which will be absolutely fine. Um, and then I want this on here as well. Um, this is a piece that Lisa has clearly put together with some gold beads on the end. I absolutely love that. Now I have got um, some waxed cord that I'm going to use to tie um, all of these lengths together. So I'm going to cut myself um, a decent amount off. I'm using waxed um, linen. This is um, point f uh, uh, 0.5 millimeter just because this is really, really strong um, and is not going to um, break. And I'm just going to slide that um, underneath, try and find the center um, as evenly as I can. And I'm just going to try and uh, tie myself a really tight um, knot. So I think the center is about is about there so I'm just going to tie myself um, a double a double knot there we go like like that and then I can trim off um, the excess like that um, I think that's fairly even now instead of doing it um, in the way that was um, suggested on the instructions I have got myself um, a bead cap here which I already had in my stash and I am going to use this to in fact I need to decide how I want this to go let me just play um, around with this and decide which colors I want to go where um, I definitely want these beads one on either side so that you can um, see them so I'm just going to play around with this first there we go I think probably um, like that and then the idea for me is to glue this inside um, that bead cap and that will hold my lovely um, threads like this isn't that pretty Now I'm going to use some um, diamond glaze by Judikins to glue my tassel in place. I'm just going to put some around the edges. Hang on, is it going to come out? Come on, out you come. Let me grab a pin and, um, oh, here we go. Let's use um, this wire just to unclog the end. I haven't used this in, um, in a little while. That should, um, that should do it. So I'm just putting the glue 
just around the edges like this, not, not too much. I don't want it um, oozing out all over the place, just enough to hold um, my ribbons in place. And then make sure I get it as I wanted it to go. And I'm going to bunch that up into a ball like that and pop it inside my bead cap. And then I'm just going to have to wait for a few minutes for that um, glue to grab those fibres before I can do anything else. Now whilst I'm waiting for the glue to dry I'm just going to pop my tassel to one side and I want to make another embellishment. I've got myself a piece of jewellery wire here, this is 20 gauge jewellery wire, much longer than I will need for the bead that I've also pulled out. This is just um, a bead that I've had from a broken piece of jewellery and what I'm going to do is I've got some round nose pliers here, I'm going to make myself a loop. So I'm going to bend that to um, a right angle like this wrap the shorter piece all the way um, around, reinsert my pliers and then form myself a loop like this here, a wrapped um, loop. So I'm just going to wrap that round two or three times, that should, um, that should do it. And then I'm just going to trim that um, excess wire then with my jewellery cutters. So hold on to that so that it doesn't go pinging um, all over the place. Pop that um, in, the, in the bin. Um, I can straighten that out um, in a second or two. Now I can thread my bead through. These wrapped loops are so easy to do. Which end is going to be easiest? Here we go, like, like that. In fact, I'm thinking I might need to have another little seed bead or something on the end. Let me just go and see what I can find. Okie dokie, so I found a couple of seed beads that I think match the tones in the large bead. So I'm going to thread one on the end like that thread my wire through. It's easier to thread it from one end than it is the other for some reason. There we go. And then we'll thread the other bead on and I'm going to do another wrapped loop on the other, the other end. So I need to leave just a little gap here just for my um, wraps um, and then bend my wire again into a right angle, wrap it um, around reposition my pliers. I hope you can see what I'm doing. And again, I'm just going to wrap that around until that gap is, is filled and my seed bead is firmly attached um, and secure, not wobbling um, around all over the place. There we go, not too tight. And then again, I can trim off that um, excess wire again, holding onto it so it doesn't go pinging off and hit me in the eye. I might need to get my other pliers. There we go, I've done it. And then you can just um, squeeze any bits that are protruding like that. We'll do it on the other on the other end as, as well. That one's pretty good actually. And so that's a nice little embellishment that can be attached um, to our little bead cap. So let me just check if this is now dry. Now, of course, we've got ribbons that are all different lengths. So what I'm going to do is just move um, the ones with the beads out of the way, just so that I don't end up um, chopping chopping those by, by mistake. Hang on, let me just get rid of these loose threads that um, are wrapped around it. Where's it gone? Let me just do this. There we go. So those are now out of the way. And then I can just trim um, these. And I think the easiest way to do it um, is just to bunch them all together like this. Get yourself a really good um, pair of scissors. Let's just uh, pull those down neatly like this. And just those scissors aren't uh, very sharp. Here we go. These are, these are the better ones. And just trim off any of the excess bits. So I'm going to do this off camera just so that I get that nice and neat, but you get the general um, idea. You can do them um, individually as well if you want to, if it's um, easier for you. I need to trim a little um, bit off that, um, that red one. And I think that's looking um, pretty, pretty good. Aren't the colours just gorgeous? Again, this one's a little bit long as, as well. 
just do it a bit at a, a time otherwise it's like um you know giving yourself a haircut isn't it where you just end up with it getting shorter and uh, and shorter now that i've trimmed all of my ribbons i want to add some of this trim onto the base of my bead cap here like this i've got um some of my diamond glaze which has been decanted into a fine nozzle bottle i just order these um from um ebay i think they come from china they're really cheap you can get you know 10 or so of them for a really reasonable price price so I'm just going to stick some of it um, on like this and I'm just going to keep adding glue around the rim of the bead cap bit by bit until I get back to where I started and I just think this will be a really um, bright and colourful addition to this bohemian style um, tassel with all these gorgeous um, jewel colours so right back to the very beginning, let's add some on that side, overlap it um, slightly and then I'm going to need to trim a little um, bit off. Well, you can see I ended up using a large bulldog clip which I'm just going to take off just to make sure that um, that glue grabbed. I think that's so pretty. How colourful and bright and cheerful is that. So I want to attach my little um, bead charm at the top. I've got two jump rings um, here. These are quite heavy duty jump rings because I don't want um, anything falling off. I'm just going to um, open it by just pulling it towards me. Never ever pull um, a jump ring um, open like that because it would just weaken the jump ring and also make it a really wonky um, strange shape as well so now i'm just going to attach my bead i've also got um, another pair of pliers just to make um, life easier you can do it with your finger though um, and just close that up just give it a bit of a, a wiggle just to make sure that it's in the right place that's the first one and then I'm going to do exactly the same with the um, second one I've got feathers all over me I've been uh, gluing shut a hole in Steve's puffer jacket um, with my glue <laughs> the feathers have all stuck to me and I'm going to do oh whoops Daisy then you need to put your little um, charm holder on like this your closure and then just close it shut again like like this give it a bit of a wiggle just to make sure that that's closed in the right place and that is my finished charm and I just think that's absolutely beautiful now of course you could hang this um, off um, a handbag a purse um, or oh, a journal anything you like or just you know hang it for decoration somewhere else I just think that's so so pretty this trim around the top has just really finished that off for me love it now, I've made a couple of tassels before. This is one that I did last year, I think it was, and this one has got all sorts on it. Instead of using a bead cap, I used an old thimble, one of my um, husband's grandmother's thimbles. Um, I've punched holes in the side, in fact, using my crocodile, I think it was, and it's got broken pieces of jewellery hanging from the side. I've got tassels and charms and things hanging from the bottom. Um, I've got one of the Tim Holtz um, little tags hanging from the side there absolutely gorgeous i love the colors in that one as well lampwork beads on the top of this one but the same kind of um a closure and then this one is just a much more simple tassel this is just using um t-shirt yarn and i've put some ribbon around the top here and um, dangled a key charm from it um just used a jewelry um hoop to loop that one through um but you know just some ideas for making tassels tassels are so much fun and so easy to make i'll leave the link to these videos here in the description box for you as well now the other thing i have left from this pack is this piece of painty paper here let me just hold it um, up to you so i'm going to try and make something out of this if you want to see what was included in the pack i'll leave the link to part one of this video as well where i do um sort of not an unboxing an unpackaging now this is on quite um, thin paper so i'm going to use some of this scotch removable glue stick it's a repositionable um glue just because this is quite flimsy um and i want to be able to use a stencil on this so I'm just going to glue some of that down um, this is removable so I will be able to peel this up afterwards let me just make sure that um, I'm in camera shot where I place this there we go that will that will do 
Um, then I want to use a stencil. What have I done with it? Just to tone the colour in this down and just to make it a bit more cohesive. I've got some gesso here, um, a great big tub that I've had forever and it is starting to go a bit gloopy. You could easily use white paint um, for this. I'm just going to put, um, in fact, I'll put it on one of my stamping um, platforms here and what I want to do is I've got um, a stencil here that is from um, oh gosh I've forgotten have I got the packaging um, here bear with me let me just um, yes I have here we go it is there's two I want to use they're folk art stent stencils uh, plaid folk art and this one here is Alibaba I'm also going to be using um, Tangier as well because I just thought these had um, you know a great bohemian um, theme to them so I want to align this part of the stencil um, at the bottom here like this and I'm just going to grab a sponge this one here will do. This is just a makeup sponge, the type that you get from um, Poundland um, in a great big bag for a pound, obviously. And I'm just going to stencil here like this. Now, be really careful that you don't add too much paint if you're going to stencil because it will bleed underneath. Um, and also that you don't move the stencil um, around. And I might need to go over this a couple of, of times just to make sure that um, it's nice and bright white. I want to tone down some of the busyness of the pattern underneath. So I'm going to go over it a couple, couple of times like this. There we are. And then remove that really carefully there we go and then I've got um, another stencil Hang on, where's that one gone a mandala type stencil and I want to have that one here like like this just I'm going to line it up with the line um, on here make sure that it's um, even at either end and again I'm just going to use white gesso because this will just really brighten up um, the image and um, tone down that um, that paint that's underneath so we'll stamp stencil this as well and again this might need a couple of coats make sure I've got all of those dots covered and then again I'm just going to carefully lift um, that up and I really like um, how that um, how that looks I'm going to give this a quick blast with my heat tool and then I'll be able to peel it up now this is dry and I've just peeled it up from my desk. It's got sticky residue um, on the other side. That's OK, because what I want to do now is stick this down to a sturdier piece of cardstock, just using um, glue stick. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got plenty, as always, around the edges. And then we'll add a good amount, whoops, a daisy in the middle as well. This is just deli paper um, that I've got underneath here to catch the excess glue. Parchment paper, baking paper will do the same job. And then I've got some scratch piece of cardstock here. I'm just going to pop that on there like that and then just gently um, rub this down because I don't, um, you know, although the gesso feels dry, um, you know, there might be still a bit of dampness underneath and I don't want to smudge it. So just gently press that down there like that and I'm just going to trim around the edges. This is what it looks like now that it's been glued down to cardstock and I want to make a couple of other embellishments that I may or may not use. I've got some more of that wallpaper this time in a blue that I thought might match um, the background here so I'm going to see if I might be able to use this. I'm going to glue a small amount of um, three in one across the top here. This is just fabric glue and then what I'm going to do is use some of this leftover trim here. This was from Maggie's kit and I'm going to glue this down um, along the top. I like these jewel colours um, here, so I'm trying, going to try and get um, as many of those in as I can. So I'm just going to stick that down across the top there like that. And then I'm going to have to um, set that aside to dry. I'm going to have to pop a couple of paper clips on this, I think, just to hold hold it in place. Okay, so that's dry and now I want to glue this onto this piece of leftover um, trim here. I'm going to use glue stick and a bit of um, three in one for that. So we'll just apply the three in one in the middle just to make sure that that's not going anywhere. 
and I'm just going to glue that in the centre of this green trim here, like, like so. Again, I'm going to have to leave that just for the glue to dry and then we can see what that looks like as an embellishment on the card. Now, before I do anything with this trim, I just want to ink around the edges um, of my card here like this. I'm using some of my treasure gold. Um, this is the colour classic. I'm just going to add it just to the very edge like this, just to give myself a bit of a beautiful gold border. Um, you could use a pen like this if you want to. Um, this is just a metallic um, pen. D this is the Deco Color Premium Prime Premio by Uchida. I love this one. The gold is gorgeous, um, but any type of um, leafing pen will, you know, work in much the same way. So I'm just going to add this all the way around the edge, like like this. Okie dokie, so the gold around the edge is now dry and I want to mount this onto a piece of that wallpaper that I've been using throughout these projects. It's just the blue version and I think that's going to work really well. It's going to tone everything down, tie the blue in that's in here and then I'm thinking that I can put my little trim on top um, like this. I've already taken a smidge off the left hand um, side and I think that's going to look really cute. So I'm just going to glue everything down. As you can see, I've glued everything down. Um, I've just wrapped the fabric around onto the back side and left these couple of pieces sticking out just because I think that looks more interesting. This card could go either this way up or this way up. Um, I've pulled out a piece of craft cardstock because it would make the most beautiful um, greetings card. I'm not going to stick it down just yet because I may even um, pop this into the new journal that I'm working on. I haven't decided yet. Well, here are all the wonderful things that I've managed to create from the kit that Maggie so very kindly sent me. If anybody from Rejuvenate is watching, I do hope that this has given you some ideas as to the types of things that you can make with the contents. These are the things I made in the first video. This is part one and for anybody who's interested in watching who hasn't seen it, I'll leave the link to that video in the description box below. And and for all of my other crafty friends as well that are into boho, I do hope that that's given you some creative ideas as well. So if you enjoyed my video today, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.